In this video, we're going to be performing a deep dive on Consolidated Edison's dividend safety. To begin, let's talk about Consolidated Edison's business model. Con Ed is a holding company that delivers electricity, natural gas, and steam to its customers in New York City and Westchester County. It has annual revenues around $12 billion and a market capitalization of $24 billion. Con Ed is a well-known dividend stock because of its compelling track record of dividend growth. With 43 years of consecutive dividend increases, Con Ed is a member of the Dividend Aristocrats Index, a group of elite dividend stocks with more than 25 years of consecutive dividend increases. Looking ahead, Con Ed's high dividend yield has led many investors to question the safety of its future dividend payments. For the remainder of this video, we will discuss the company's current dividend safety from four perspectives. Its dividend safety in the context of its current earnings, its dividend safety in the context of its current free cash flow, its dividend safety in the context of its recession performance, and its dividend safety in the context of its current debt load. First, let's discuss Con Ed's dividend safety in the context of the company's current earnings. When Consolidated Edison reported its third quarter financial results on November 1st, the company reported that it generated earnings per share of $1.40 in the three-month reporting period. For context, Con Ed currently pays a quarterly dividend of 71.5 cents per share, which implies a payer ratio of just 51% in the most recent quarter. Looking out over a longer time horizon, our conclusion is the same. Con Ed generated $3.38 of earnings per share through the first nine months of fiscal 2018 and paid $2.145 of dividends during the same time period for a payout ratio of 72%. Using earnings, Con Ed's dividend appears very safe for the foreseeable future. Many analysts believe that comparing a company's dividend payments to its free cash flow is a better method for assessing dividend safety. With that in mind, we will now compare Con Ed's current dividend payment to its free cash flow. Through the first nine months of fiscal 2018, Con Ed generated $1.6 billion of cash flow from operating activities and spent $2.5 billion on capital expenditures for free cash flow of approximately negative $900 million. Con Ed paid $631 million of common share dividends during the same time period. This is an alarming observation. Consolidated Edison's year-to-date dividends have not been covered by its free cash flow. Looking back at the last fiscal year, the trend continues. Consolidated Edison generated $3.4 billion of cash from operating activities in fiscal 2018 and spent $3 billion on capital expenditures for free cash flow of roughly $400 million. The company paid $800 million of common share dividends during the same fiscal year. Overall, Consolidated Edison's inability to cover its dividend with free cash flow during the, either the year-to-date reporting period or the last fiscal year gives us some concern about its ability to fund its dividend organically moving forward. With that said, the company's long history of steady dividend increases leads us to believe that the company's dividend is a priority for its management team moving forward and that this lack of free cash flow dividend coverage may be due to a short-term period of increased capital investment. Companies do not cut their dividends in the good times. Instead, dividends are reduced when companies experience financial difficulties. Accordingly, this section will analyze Consolidated Edison's current dividend safety in the context of the company's historical recession performance. We believe that the best way to measure a company's recession resiliency is by measuring its earnings per share performance during the financial crisis that occurred between 2007 and 2009. Consolidated Edison's performance during this time period is shown here. Con Ed's earnings per share performed very well during the last economic contraction. Earnings per share declined by less than 10% and the company continued to steadily increase its dividend payment. With that in mind, we have no concerns about the company's ability to pay rising dividends during future economic contractions. The last angle that we will use to assess Consolidated Edison's current dividend safety is by looking at the company's current debt level. More specifically, we will see how much the company's weighted average interest rate will need to increase before its net income will no longer cover its dividend payment. Consolidated Edison generated $208 million of interest expense during the most recent quarter and ended the reporting period with $16.6 .6 billion of debt outstanding. This implies a weighted average interest rate of 5%. The following image shows how changes to Consolidated Edison's weighted average interest rate would impact the company's dividend coverage as measured by net income. Note that this image uses the company's 2018 net income guidance and current dividend rate for calculation purposes. As the image shows, Consolidated Edison's weighted average interest rate would need to rise to approximately the 8% level before its dividend would no longer be covered by net income. While this scenario is not out of the question, it is highly unlikely for a blue chip utility company like Consolidated Edison. Because of this, we have little concern about the company's debt preventing it from paying rising dividends moving forward. Thank you for watching today's video. 
which performed a deep dive on Consolidated Edison's current dividend safety. We invite you to subscribe to this channel and like this video, which will help more people discover Sure Dividends investor education efforts. If you're interested in learning more about our systematic approach to dividend growth investing, visit our website at www.suredividend.com.